Welcome to Compassion Speaks. My name is Shasta Van Cleve with Compassus Hospice, and I'm your host. Today we have with us the president of Sholo Little League, Kelsey Zampedri. Welcome, Kelsey. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you for coming today. <laughs> with springtime coming, the city of Sholo, of course, is gearing up for Little League season. Yes. And I know growing up, Little League was a really big deal for all the kids. Mm -hmm. and, and I really can't think of any kid that didn't play. Right. So I'm so glad that the program's going strong here in the White Mountains and you, of course, are the president. <laughs> Tell us, Kelsey, how did you become the president of Sholo Little League? Well, our board was voted on by um, the volunteers of last year, each year. Um, if you are a volunteer and fill out the proper paperwork, you get a vote for the next year's board. And um, I was voted on the board, and then the board voted me in as president. Okay. How many are on the board? There's seven of us. And can you name those people? Yes. So we have um, myself and then Rachel Hatch. She is our vice president and treasurer. Joelle Reed is our player agent, sorry. <laughs> and, and let me interrupt and ask, what is the player agent? The player agent um, does everything to benefit the players. She takes care of any trades that we might have, if there's a conflict of interest. She has the best interest of the player in mind. Not necessarily exactly what maybe the parents want, but what the players want or what is best for the player. Okay, so you have and then Rachel we, and Joelle. Uh -huh. And then Heather Stahl is our softball vice president. So she is over all of our softball program, which encompasses from T-ball clear up to um, 16 years of age. So she takes on a lot of work. We have Becca Seely, who is our coach's liaison. Um, she handles all the coaching, all the um, complaints of the coaches, the needs of the coaches, whatever is happening with the coaches, she takes care of. And Clint Brown is our safety officer and our equipment guy. So we have a full staff and um, it's all volunteer. So people need to be patient with us. <laughs> right. Because um, it is volunteer, but it is a lot of work and a lot of time and effort goes into making a Little League season go well. Right, so don't complain unless you've raised your hand to volunteer, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> when do the children need to be registered for this season and how do they go about doing that? So this week, um, tomorrow or tonight, um, February 28th, is our registration at the pool from five to seven. Um, and then we've added one last registration, which will be Saturday at um, both Nicholas Homestead Gym and the city gym during basketball games. And those are our last two live registrations. However, you can get online and register at bluesombrero.com. Bluesombrero.com. Bluesombrero.com, yes. What are the age groups? I'm assuming it's still starts with t-ball yes it does and is t-ball for girls and boys um, or? boys and girls are combined in t-ball okay and that's what age group um from about uh about the five and six year olds okay some four-year-olds play um if there's an exception or their parents are coaching um four-year-olds can definitely play so four five and six and then they go up to what we call our farm league and that's where boys and girls separate and um the pitching is done off of a pitching machine. They have teams. They start to learn um, the rules and how to hit a live ball, how to field a live ball, three outs. Um, so that group is a lot of fun. It's a lot of learning, a whole lot of learning. As from T-ball, you're learning the very basics and then you just step up to pitching machine, which is our farm league. Minors goes from um, eight and nine year olds, and um, that is where the boys are pitching. That's the first step in the boys pitching and the girls pitching. Um, we have a minors girls and a minors boys. And then majors goes till 12, and um, that is super fun to watch. It's still on the Little League field for the boys, and 
um, for the girls, it's up at the Ponderosa field. So that's fun. And then juniors goes to the big field, the senior field. And that is for 13, 14, and some 15-year-olds get to play that. And they are able to use the full base path. And um, it's kind of like high school ball is what it's like. And then we also are offering a senior league team this year um, for 15 and 16 year olds. And that is um, for the boys. Uh, a lot of those players will be coming over from the high school team as soon as the high school is finished with their season. So there's a number of different, different age groups. Yes. Back to T-ball. They don't do three outs. Do they? Eat? Does every child get a turn to bat each I inning? I believe so. Is that so. how that works? It's been a while since any of my kids have been in T-ball, but I do believe so that um, they all get to bat. Um, if they are out, then they have to go back to the dugout. But I believe that um, they all get a hit each inning. And then the girls do. I'm assuming an underhand pitch. Yes. For theirs. When do they switch to fast pitch or do they in the little um, league? Actually, they just go right into fast pitch from oh, okay. um, from farm league. Uh, we start um, teaching them how to just do as fast as they can. Um, of course, in minors, it's a little slow, but they're getting the basics and they're getting the concept. So it works out really well. And so just on the board, it takes a lot of people. But just for one game, it must also take a lot of volunteers. Yes. How, what is the need with Sholo Little League for volunteers? Where are some gaps that you find that you need to fill? And then how does a person become approved or certified to volunteer for Little League? Well, every volunteer through the Little League organization has to have a background check. Um, and they can't have any, any, I guess, crimes on their background check. It used to just be crimes against children and Little League has up the standard to where it's a little bit tougher. However, if you have a clean background check, um, we can always use your help. Um, you can get a hold of one of the board members and fill out an application. Coaches are always a need, good coaches that care about the boys and the girls. Um, we always need assistance, help in the concession stands. Um, there is a need just about everywhere. Um, every year we get people to help out and they are amazing. They influence the kids for years to come and it's great. Um, but there is always a need for a little extra help. So it's been many years since I've played ball. If I wanted to volunteer, is there any kind of training to maybe brush brush up on the rules uh, if someone wanted to volunteer to umpire or coach? Absolutely. Um, just um, two Saturdays ago, Chance Sneed, who is over um, the umpires in our region, um, did an umpire's clinic. And anybody that wanted to umpire, any coach that wanted to brush up on um, old rules, new rules, every year Little League develops new rules. Um, he went over all of those, and I believe he's going to be having another one in Blue Ridge in the near future, and I'm not sure when, but there's always that. We do do a coaches meeting where we inform the coaches of the new rules, and um, they each get their own rule book. You can read those rule books. Um, you can get online, and I think that there's different YouTube videos and instructions that way. So there is a number of opportunities to learn and to be informed about Little League. How many coaches does it take to get Sholo Little League through a season, inc including all the boys' teams and all the girls' teams? So we planned, I believe, on 42 teams this year between boys and girls. Um, we do have the largest Little League on the mountain, I believe. Um, with that being said, um, we figure each team needs at least two coaches. So that's 84 coaches that we're looking for to help our league. Our league usually encompasses about 500 kids. Um, without the help of coaches and sponsors, businesses in the area are wonderful to sponsor teams and to um, help our organization out to grow and to be able to buy the right equipment and safe equipment. This past year, Little League um, 
passed a new rule about bats. Um, all of our bats were obsolete ab as of last year, so each team had to have new bats purchased. And what makes a bat obsolete? <laughs> well, um, I'm not quite sure <laughs> how that happened, but um, it, they're a newer bat that is um, more designed like maybe an old wooden bat. Um, not, it's not a wooden bat, but it doesn't have as much pop off the bat for safety reasons. Um, you, the, it, the ball won't hit as fast off the bat, mm -hmm. so it won't come back as hard maybe to the pitcher or um, they're saying we shouldn't expect as many kids to hit it over the fence this year. Just different, different things that they um, are requiring for safety of the children. Is it common to see the kids hit it over the fence? Um, yes, each year it's so fun to watch mm -hmm. those kids and the excitement that they get and it's a lot of fun. So I hope that it doesn't completely go away. Right. It's, it's fun for them. Kelsey, how much does it cost to sign up for T-ball or for Little League? And then how much does it cost for a business to sponsor a team? Um, it is $75 per um, athlete to register. Um, and that includes your jersey, your hat. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, you get the equipment, of course. You just have to have cleats and a glove um, to show up for practice. Uh, as for businesses, if you are a business that has sponsored in the past and already has a banner and you want to do a banner and a team, it's $400. If you want to do a banner and a team and don't have a banner already in place, then it's $500. And it works down from there. I believe it's anywhere from $250 to $500. And there's different levels that you can sponsor at. If someone wanted to sponsor just an individual player, may they do that? Um, absolutely. Maybe um, pay their registration fee? Absolutely. Do you find that you have some kids that would like to play that are unable to, to pay the 75? Yes, and we don't turn them away. Um, in the um, Little League's organization, we aren't able to turn them away. However, um, there are so many um, play, uh, people that sponsor that um, as gifts, or Sholo Youth Foundation always helps out. Um, there's different organizations in the mountains, the White Mountain Submarine Club, I think, um, they give for um, registration sponsorships. Kelsey, is there a website that people can go to to get more information about volunteering? Um, at bluesombrero.com slash Sholo Little League, I believe is what it is. Um, or you can contact myself or one of our board members. Um, we would love to have any type of volunteer. We also have a Facebook page under Sholo Little League and um, a Instagram account, I believe. Plenty of ways to there are plenty of to ways. gather the mm -hmm. information. Well, when is opening day? Uh, April the seventh. April seventh. I believe up. so. Yes. Well, the community thanks you for your work. Little League is so wonderful, and I know that there are some kids who move up the ranks and go on to college and 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 play ball. So thank you for all your hard work. Well, thank you. We'll be back with our next guest. Welcome back to Compassion Speaks. Our guests now are the Sheriff's Auxiliary Volunteers of Navajo County. We have President Jeff Hanna and Vice President Bob Clements. Welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for coming today. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having us. So often out in the community, I see the auxiliary volunteers maybe helping at rodeos or parades and all kinds of different events. And I'm very interested to find out what the auxiliary volunteers do. What role do you play in, and how do you uh, get involved with different events in the community? Well, typically what happens is uh, a request will come in to our sergeant and, and the request can be found on the sheriff's website. If you go to Navajo County 
and in the departments, scroll down to the sheriff's department. Then you'll see a little burb down at the bottom uh, about the SAVs. And our service request is form is there, our application form is there, and so is our house watch form, uh, which are three things that we do quite a bit of. Uh, the house watch is probably our most active thing that we do. Vacation homes we do a lot of uh, out in Hever Overgard and in Pine Top. We do quite a few of them. Uh, and there's also some families that just want us to be in the neighborhood. So we, uh, they, we come by and check their house on a weekly basis. So you're not law enforcement officers. No, but no, you do we're help, not. You do help the sheriff's department. It was established in 1990 as an assistant to assist the sheriff in his uh, role of security and uh, criminal or prevention and that's what we do with house watches and helping out in that in that area so uh, we have five right now four different units established by units and we have the White Mountain Lake unit we have the Cedar Hills unit we have the high country unit and we have Heber Overgard each one has a director because we are a nonprofit 501 3C organization and as such we have to have a corporation we are a corporation I said president and vice president and we have the directors uh, of our corporation we work hand in hand as the sheriff says we are the eyes and ears of the sheriff's department we don't get involved in criminal activities but if we in our house watch observe or come across a home that apparently has been broken into we back off, we call the deputies who are law enforcement. They come out, investigate, and then afterwards we may remain with the house to ensure that the house stays safe and no one enters it, no one no, basically enters it because most people would be gone if, if there was a break in. And that's our role as far as our involvement. Uh, so in, everyone in your organization is a volunteer. Yes. Yes. And you're filling a gap then that law enforcement maybe can't stay once a house is broken into, and so you're there filling that gap and helping. How many volunteers are are in your group, Jeff? We have about 70 on our records right now, uh, and <clears throat> probably 45 to 50 are full-time residents up here. So we have people that just come up during the summertime, which we always love because during the summertime we're real busy with parades. Uh, our fire season is, is real busy. So between the parades, fire season, um, bike events that happen up here because we have beautiful weather up here. Everybody from the valley likes to come up here and, and spend the weekend. So there's car shows, just about anything that's going on. Uh, we usually get asked to help with fingerprinting at the schools. Uh, back to a, a little bit more of what we do with the sheriff, though, is uh, it, they do call us from time to time uh, to sit crime scenes mm -hmm. or traffic accidents, things of that nature, where especially on busy days when they have two or three accidents in one day, we may get called out to assist with traffic on that, uh, which happens. It's it's terrible what it happens mm -hmm. and we're all, we our guys go through quite an extensive training program in directing traffic and positioning our cars and uh, our personal safety looking out for if, if something is to come at us to get out of the way of it um, we very much enjoy the, a lot of our guys do it because they enjoy the community and they very much like working with the deputies and with the sheriff so uh, it's been a, a pretty good relationship, yeah. I think. Is there a minimum requirement for time that a, a person must commit to per week or per month to be a volunteer with the auxiliary? Yes. Right now, it's, it's only eight hours a month. Is the minimum? Is the minimum. When, when you get into a, more of a leadership role, um, it can be a little bit more than that, actually quite a bit more than that, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> sometimes up to 80 hours a month. Uh, more than that in some cases during the during the summertime um, last year my highest was 120 hours uh, but we had fires going and there was a lot going on so how many hours is the training 
Right now it's at 64 hours, which is about, a, it's three, three days a week, uh, three hours a night, and then there's two Saturdays. Uh, each one of them is an eight hour day. So it's about 64 hours right now. Yeah. So I'd like to mention one thing. I'm looking at the little kids up there and he mentioned fingerprinting. And that's one of the things that we do for children. There is a form that parents can bring, or we have a kit. They come over, the child is fingerprinted, and identification marks in a picture of them, and it's for law enforcement. Should any of those little children disappear, then you're not working in the blind, so to speak, looking for a child. You have a picture, and in the event of a bad situation, you have fingerprints and forms of identifying you know, the child, the missing child. And From time to time, are you called upon to search for missing people? We are. Occasionally. Uh, we, we, there's a down and dirty, uh, the golden hour, they say, and we usually are in that first hour. If it goes beyond the hour, then they call in the search and rescue guys. Uh, who are more thoroughly trained. Mm -hmm. We usually stay on the streets, uh, walking around the houses. We'd, if it's into the back country, um, we'll, we'll, we may sit at their command post and, and be security there, but uh, we help them in search and rescue. So you may be thinking that you might be volunteering for eight hours on a given day, and that could actually turn into many more hours. It's rare. But sometimes it happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we've we've had to sit fires for 12 hours before, or uh, we've had I've sat crime scenes for 14 hours, which it's not always the best thing. We usually mm -hmm. try to have we usually try to get people uh, shifts to where we can get to a, a team of two to four people out there and relieve them halfway through a night. So that's usually what we do, and usually it works. <laughs> Do you have your own office where people can go and have their children fingerprinted? No, we don't. Uh, right now, in Sholo, we would use the Sholo, uh, either the Sholo station or we'd book a room somewhere. Um, the same with the other communities. Mm -hmm. When we do it uh, in Winslow and Holbrook, they usually do it uh, once a year up at the schools. So we'll go up to the schools. We actually have one one SAV member who lives in that area. So he does a lot of SAV stuff up there, but if he needs help, we usually go up there and help him with that. So are you re actively recruiting volunteers right now? Always. <laughs> All the time, <laughs> yes. And so in addition to the training, what other requirements would someone need to meet to become a volunteer with you? Our minimum age is 16. Oh, we okay. have a junior program that runs, uh, I'm sorry, 15. It runs 15 to 18 as a junior. And then um, 18 and above, they can actually drive the car after they go through the academy. So, uh, and they're no top age. Uh, I think we have a 80, yeah. <laughs> 85 year we old. We have some right older now. people on board. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we have an application that they need to fill out to start with. And in it, they, they have to uh, be fingerprinted, which will be checked against FBI's uh, fingerprinting. Uh, we also check their driving record. Since they drive a real patrol car, uh, the sheriff wants to make sure that they don't have a track record of, uh, <laughs> of, of driving problems. After that, uh, then they, once that is done, they meet with a unit. We have a uh, interview process or ask questions. Just because you want to be a volunteer doesn't necessarily mean you're really going to be able to be a volunteer. Uh, you need the, the time uh, is involved, the school is involved. Mm -hmm. uh, these, let's see. Are there any physical requirements? Uh, like a, a no. doctor's evaluation or anything like no, that? No, no, we, okay. we don't go that far. Where do they find the applications, Bob? online or they can find it from almost anybody that's driving a patrol car <laughs> has a console and in it are applications for our house watch and for em employment <laughs> uh, pay is zero but I guess you really zero. <laughs> but, but uh, the applications are there and they can fill it out uh, 
and that's the fingerprinting would normally be done. We would normally go to them if they can't come to us and fingerprint it to help in that uh, case and then submit it into the sheriff's department and the sheriff checks the, the, the driving record and then the fingerprints are sent off to be checked. Uh, Is there anything you want the community to know about the auxiliary volunteers that maybe we don't know? You know, I, I, I believe they see us out there quite a bit and, I, and they feel the same way about their community that we do. I, and maybe they just uh, don't know how to go about getting involved with us. And if they do go onto the county website and punch down through the sheriff's department, they'll, they can learn a little bit more about us on there, but they can also uh, fill out an application and, and we'd love to talk to anybody. And we usually do. Anywhere yeah. we're, when we're out and about, we will end up talking to people. And, and you find out a lot about people. So it's, 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 a, it's very fun and interesting. Um, th when you get into the leadership side of it, sometimes there's some, uh, with everything, you know, you got to do scheduling and stuff like that. But when you're just the volunteer, it's, it's, it's great. Um, the gr the, all the volunteers really like, love their community and enjoy what they're doing. And um, I, I really believe that uh, we need more people in the community that, would, that can help us. It would be wonderful because there's always something going on. Our, act, our activities include just patrolling. And as the sheriff says, there are places and times where he just wants a sheriff's car driven through the areas. Uh, although we can't do anything, we do have a communications ability to talk on the car and talk with a with the mobiles and we can have somebody there pretty fast to take care of it but just seeing a, a police car drive around um, may make people think twice before they do something well, we thank you gentlemen for all of your volunteer work in the community thank you for having thank us. you thank you for having us thank you until next time we'll see you on compassion speaks <laughs>